Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Mana Lords. Now last time we finally broke into a new region, which is really good. But we did have some timber issues, I think they're now sorted, which is really good to see. And we can actually crack straight on with what we're going to be doing in today's episode. Now last time we did get quite a bit of grain in and we can now start adjusting and using that grain to create bread, which is really going to help us with our food issues. But before we can move into our new region, there's a few other things that I want to do here. So let's dive into the episode and we'll talk a little bit more about what's going to be happening. So, we've got a bandit camp already on the map. I'm going to quickly pause and we're going to try and find that now. It's right over there in Imanruth, and that's going to be a really good option for us. So, we're going to very quickly take our small retinue over to that area. And we're also going to bring in some new militia. Now, mercenaries. We've got uh, the Wayward Sons there who are ready to go. They'll arrive in Hofstedden, which is uh, decent. So, we'll take them on. And uh, that's all we've got. So, we'll unpause things here we'll find Hofstein which is down there and we'll get this lot on their way over to that region as well so we'll try and bring everybody as close as possible we'll speed things up very quickly because if we can take this bandit camp down we'll have enough to actually move into this region as well which gives us a second new region to expand into and that's going to be uh, very very good for us because we can then continue to expand and my main aim is actually to take walled brand uh, right in the middle there and that is going to be kind of like a big city for us i'm going to try and make that as large as possible and then start funneling as many resources as i possibly can into walled brand and these outer regions will mainly be for uh, little farmsteads and uh, supplying that main area because if you can get a grip on that central region I think we'll be in a very good position and we'll have a good staging post for the further uh, expansions that we're looking to do as we look to claim enemy territory. At the moment, uh, things aren't looking good in terms of food and fuel, but we are going to deal with that as soon as we possibly can. Uh, we have lost a couple of uh, approval ratings, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, we'll have to kind of look to sort that out later on. But for now, let's just get ourselves to this bandit camp, take that down. Hopefully before our enemy army can uh, get sight of that. I think we should be okay though. Uh, we'll bring these archers into the woodland here. And we'll keep our retinue and our spearmen just on the outskirts of this region. And uh, as you can see the bandits are coming out now to meet us. So we're going to try and trail them back a little bit. Into the path of our archers. Who we can then kind of move down into battle right there. Okay we're going to things we've increased our influence already which actually means we're going to stake a claim on this land right now so we'll press a claim into that region Imman Ruth will be ours very soon and uh, we've got these uh, archers here the mercenaries they're now almost in position and in fact this group here are going to be able to now flank these brigands these ones can start firing there and then we'll have these archers and the retinue charge from the side there. We're going to pull back these archers. And as you can see, there we go. They're now being taken out and we're attacking them from the back. I think this is pretty good going for us. We're losing a few mercenaries, but there we go. Some arrows flying off from our other group. And it looks like they're a bit scattered now. So the retinue and our spear folk are now charging. Which is very nice to see. Uh, you can't really see much going on here at the moment. But yeah, it looks like we've broken them. Yeah, excellent. Cool. And then we'll push everybody into Imanruth there. To take down the bandit camp. And that's going to give me a nice big boost to my gold. Or rather my uh, treasury. And we'll also... I think we gain influence for taking down these bandit camps. No, we don't. But it must have just been for a... Uh, Taking that, um, the, the little group of brigands out. Now, we'll quickly disband those mercenaries. We don't actually need them anymore. We just need to claim this area, and then that's a really good start to this episode. So, back in Eichenhau, uh, what I want to do is I want to build a new logging camp over here. And this is mainly because I have struggled with timber in one area there. So, we're also going to put down a forester's hut, and then we'll link this up with a little road. That cuts across the landscape here and joins back up 
with the King's Road there. Once they're built, we can then start getting some forestry done in this area and allow the uh, logging area over here to replenish a little bit. We just have a quick look. It looks like this is... Wait, we're not in Eichenau. Uh, uh, yeah, you see, Zweihau is where we are, not Eichenau. Uh, Imanruth will be claimed very soon, which is really good to see. And uh, we're getting a little bit more timber coming in now, but our fuel is in a spot of bother at the moment. We've got a woodcutter's lodge there and people seem to be using it. So maybe we do need to add in another woodcutter's lodge. I think we should probably put it... Um, no, we're not going to add another woodcutter's lodge. We don't actually need it. Berry deposit is now full. We could do with putting another forager in there. That's really nice. And then over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new road. We could just use this one. And then we'll have that stone quarry kind of get cut off here. And the road will bend ever so slightly around. And match up to there. And then we'll have this kind of forming a bit of a crossroads that goes along by the church. And it's almost like a giant horseshoe shape. And that's going to loop around here. Into a crossroads there. And then here where our mine is, we're just going to frame it with another road. This space is going to be where we put some new burgage. And what I'm going to want these ones to do is just focus on getting new farms in. So we're going to go to here, and then to here, and then I think that's pretty decent. So once we get 10 timber in, that's what we'll start doing. But now, these logging camps need to be constructed. Right, in the meantime, we want to come over into our new area here. And we want to construct a settler's camp. This costs our uh, money from our treasury. But we are able to get that put in place. So, let's get that down. We're going to put the settler's camp right here, I think. We've also claimed Imminruth, which is really good. Uh, yeah, the settler's camp is going to go here. So there... We just want it to be a town. We can't actually put any more of these in, but that's fine. We're in, we're good, we've settled a brand new region, and we can actually make a start on putting things together over here as well. So, we should have some resources. We've obviously got homeless people's tents in there as well. We're going to begin by sticking a logging camp right in the middle of this area here, and a woodcutter's lodge right over here. And then we'll add in a road that links this all up. Just a straight road coming out of there, and then the logging camp is going to have a little bit of a curved road that joins down here. We then want to put in a hunting lodge, which we'll put on the edge of the forest there. Actually, we can put the hunting lodge and the gatherers put right next to each other. So we'll just spin this around, put it there, and then we'll link it up with a road that will then come out of here. A nice curve through the forest. There we go. Right, that's good. That's very good. And yes, so they're all going to get to work. We've got the logging camp under construction. We've also got the woodcutter's lodge under construction. And then we're going to add in, again, some storage logistics options of a storehouse, which will go... We want to probably put the storehouse there. That's a decent location for it. And the granary... We'll just go on the corner here. Perfect. Right, they're going to be able to get to work and start doing some stuff. Then we can actually put in along here. I'm going to put a nice little pathway. And we'll have it curve up to here and then stop. And then we'll have it come off this way and join up the King's Road. And then along here is where I'll start putting in some burgage. So, burgage plot. Oh, ooh, let's have a look at a well. Yeah, we can get a well in down there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, burgage, we'll be able to sort that out as well. So if we move over to Zvayo, we've got a couple of people who are really unhappy because there's requirements not being met. 
Uh, it's probably to do with the food stalls. Yeah, we, we don't have a lot of food types, which is a bit of a shame. And quite frustratingly, a lot of stocks have just been damaged by supplies. Yeah, this tailor shop here, we don't have a fuel stall supply for them. Uh, our firewood is dwindling rapidly, and the woodcutters don't seem to be able to cope with that. So we're going to shift their work area again to, I don't know, there, and at the back. And hopefully, I'll start getting sorted. The charcoal kiln doesn't have anyone working on it, so we're going to add a few people into that. And it looks like we now have our logging camp up and running, which is really good. And the forester's hut is there as well. So we'll put someone into forestry. We will put someone into the logging camp there. And we will... Well, we're not actually going to limit the work area. We're going to leave that. But we are now getting quite a bit of timber in. And then I think we should probably, just to make life easier, add in another woodcutter's lodge, which I'll put right out in the sticks here. It's a long way to go to get back to the village, but... That should at least help us out quite a bit. Uh, as you can see there, firewood is non-existent now. Moving over to Iconau, you can see this absolute hive of activity that has sprung up around here. We have our storehouse done and we have our... Looks like we're still working on logging camps. We're working on Woodcutter's Lodge and then over here where we've got our other stuff that's getting built as well. Over in Immenruth, we can't actually afford to set up a new settlement, so that's fine. We do have a hungry family over here, somehow, even though we've got enough food to last. And then over here, oh, we don't have any food here. That's the problem. Uh, okay, right, people require food or they might starve. I thought I would have had food already. We are going to boost into that forager hut then and make that the highest priority we can possibly get in so that these villagers don't starve before they've even had an opportunity to start building our new settlement. And then we should be able to get them working, get someone in that forager hut. There we go, straight away. Forager hut is in. We've got, we'll have two people working in there. That's a lot, a large berry deposit, so that's fine. And uh, they, they probably need a market as well, so let's put down a marketplace very quickly. We'll have like a, a nice, a decent sized marketplace that kind of runs along here. That gets us a nice big market, which is good. Uh, yeah, there's nothing we can really do about the exposed stuff there, but we now should have... Yeah, we've got food, we've got berries coming in, we've got stone, and uh, that's really good. Now, over here. How are we looking? We're still short of fuel, but we do have Woodcutter's Lodge that's up and running. And uh, Timber's pretty healthy now, which is very nice to see. So we're going to pop down some more burgage over here. As I wanted to before, go all the way up to the top here and then bring this around. Now, all of these are going to be vegetable plots. I'm actually going to decrease the size until I can get extra houses put in there. So we're only actually going to have one, two, three, four in there, but the, the plots are a lot bigger now. Pop that down. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to do the same in this little area. And that's going to come all the way up to here, creating these really odd shaped burgage plots. But I think they're pretty cool as well. That's the whole point. And then down this side, we're going to go to here, along here, and then finish it off with these ones. And all of these are going to be pumping out veggies. So we're going to have a nice big patch of uh, vegetable garden stuff. And then can I maybe... Yeah, we'll leave that as it is. We can probably fit more burgage in here to really boost the amount of people that would be coming in here to live. Uh, yeah, that's pretty sizable. It's a large chunk there, so we can get lots of vegetables put in place. That's a construction cost of 10. Uh, so if we get 10 timber, we can get those built, and hopefully we'll get more people moving in, which means we can really, really produce some... Uh, large numbers of stuff we are going to need a new marketplace i think though because oh we did put one in there i think this marketplace should now be deleted so we'll demolish that and then they should all move into this central marketplace which will certainly help us supply as many of these buildings as we possibly can right over to eichenhau how are we looking here 
We've got quite a bit of stuff coming in. We've got our logging camp up and running, so we'll get someone into that. And uh, while we're waiting, do we have any logs left? No. So the logging camp will get underway. And we've also got our woodcutter's lodge. We don't have anyone in there right now, but there's a little bit of fuel left over. We will get someone working in that, though. Plenty of berries for now. Uh, the granary, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Uh, the storehouse doesn't have anything in there still. We've still got some supplies there. We will move the hitching post to uh, just across the road from the marketplace. I think that'll be a good way, good place to put it. We, we have a hunting camp. We have a forager's hut. Once this uh, berry deposit has been depleted, we'll get them hunting in the um, in the forest there. We'll keep that hunting limit at 20 so that our animals can reproduce nice and quick. And do we have a bandit camp anywhere yet? No. What we need to do now is try and press a claim for walled brand. And that's going to involve us waiting. Got some exposed goods there. That's going to move soon, surely. Uh, we should probably get someone... We have someone working in the granary. What else have they got there? Some herbs. Yes, of course. Don't have enough supplies. We're still short on firewood. Um, it looks like food is also a little bit of an issue, but that's fine. Exposed goods and exposed goods and some requirements still not being met. Uh, over here at our pasture, we do uh, need to get some livestock brought in. So we can't do anything with the sheep farm yet, but that's going to really help us out very soon. And as you can see, our burgage are starting to be constructed, which is really, really good. Now, one of the things that we can see here is our forester's hut is working absolutely overtime, which is really nice. What I want them to do is come over here and plant some trees right there. But also, now that I have another logging camp, I'm going to make this logging camp here move into this region and I want them to cut down the trees around that area there. Now, I know I was really excited about setting up that wooden church in and amongst those houses but as you can see my manor is completely obscured by trees now so we are going to have some of those trees cut down. I'm just going to make sure that I'm targeting over my manor so that those trees get chopped and uh, yeah. So we are struggling now with fuel, but we are starting to get charcoal being produced, which is really nice. And uh, hopefully, once these burgage plots are finished, we'll be able to get some people moving in. And I want to actually start converting all of these to vegetable gardens as soon as they're built, which will really start to boost our food intake. And uh, that'll be really nice. Uh, if we can get loads of vegetable plots in here at large sizes, we're going to be able to really push our food production. Over here, I'm going to drop in another vegetable garden and as you can see we've still got plenty of settlement um, regional wealth that's gonna keep us going I forgot what I was saying uh, yeah we're looking really good at the moment now and the next step for Zvayau is actually going to be to build a windmill so the windmill as you can see it has a an efficiency rating so if we can get the efficiency rating as high as possible Probably by putting the windmill up in the hills, you will get a much better yield from the rain. Yeah, not getting a great deal here, so I think we'll put it there. That'd be a good place for it. And then the communal oven is going to go just at the back here. And then we can actually run a path that goes along by the windmill, comes around here and ends there and at the back of the sheep farm here i'm going to do the same and it's just going to come right the way along next to the windmill and link back up in that space there so we've now got another little plot there which we can actually add some more burgage on and this is actually going to be somewhere where we can start producing some different goods do have space there but that i want to grow into trees so we can have this nice little community nestled in there I think what we need to do here is put a tavern in. Our tavern is going to be right on the edge here, on the King's Road, on the corner, so that people who are trading and using livestock and stuff, they will be able to come to the tavern and uh, get a nice pint at the end of the day. I think we're looking pretty good here. We've got loads of vegetables now, and we can even add another vegetable plot there and another one here. People are going to start moving in pretty quickly. More over there and you can see now we're starting to build a nice 
big store of food here. And uh, that should probably do us for Zvayao at the moment. Fuel is an issue. I'm hoping that that gets solved very soon with this new woodcutter's lodge. We can definitely pump a few more people into work there. And perhaps what I should do actually is rather than having the logging camp work in a different area. We're good on timber now actually. We can shut down that logging camp for now. And our woodcutter's lodge here, we can move their work area to the area around my manor. I think that would be a good way to do it. So we'll have them just come to here to get rid of that tree that's there. We are going to struggle for fuel in the winter. Is my trade post getting rid of things I don't want them to get rid of? <laughs> are they getting rid of firewood? Yes, they are. It looks like they are, but I've said to not trade it. Okay, so that's fine. They shouldn't be trading firewood. <laughs> we are starting to build up a little bit of a stockpile now, which is really good with winter approaching. We need to get Eichenhau ready for winter. And at the moment, we're pretty far off. We've got 30 units of timber, though, so we can get some burgage put in. And again, these are all going to have vegetable gardens on them. We're going to run all the way along here up to the logging camp. We're going to come out a little bit and then we're going to have a nice big plot right there in fact let's uh let's just adjust that a little bit let's make them a little bit of a strange shape there that's going to give us enough to produce some vegetables and we will increase this the size of those houses to add in the extra extra living space and that should give us enough food and firewood for the winter. And it also ends homelessness as we move into November of year four. All right. So at the moment, our fuel supply is pretty grim. We are going to really need to boost our firewood intake. And I'm not really sure where we're going to be able to do that from. Uh, this woodcutter's lodge here is working overtime, but it does have a bit of an issue in getting people to transport firewood into a market. But right now, I'm pretty happy with things. We have managed to... Hopefully we can uh, just recover from this fuel issue. We could do with another forester's hut, though. I'd like to get one here. Where this woodcutter's lodge is so we will add in a brand new forester's hut right there as well i think i put one in down here i did yes so we need them to just continue planting this logging camp for now we can close down because we have plenty of timber in just in case we need it and uh yeah that's that's looking much better forester's hut we've got two there and over the winter i'm gonna have two working in that forester's hut and then We'll have another one working in this one. We can have two working in that one as well. This woodcutter's lodge really needs to push because we are struggling for firewood and we get double consumption during the winter. Oof, it's difficult. Forager's hut, we're going to take them out. We don't need anyone working in there because they'll not be producing the herbs anymore. But we've increased our settlement level at Eichenau, so let's move over here. And, uh, we're, yeah, we'll just slow things down. Have a look at what we can spend our points on now. I think, because of where we are, this might be a good place to add in something like orchardry. And we'll have some apples being produced in here. Um, given that, you know, they have not much in the way of food, but there's a great big hunt. I think, actually, let's double those berry deposits. Let's do that. There we go. That gives us a huge berry deposit. Now, as it's winter, we're going to take away our foragers and we're going to put them into the hunting camps. Then they can hunt through the winter. We still have generic, uh, general storage goods that are exposed here. So where's our storehouse? We're going to have someone work in that storehouse. And hopefully, uh, where else? We've got logging camp. We'll take someone out of the logging camp. We don't need that right now. And we will expand those residential areas with extra living spaces. And at the moment, the regional wealth is not amazing. 
so we do need to be very careful with how we construct our burgage we do need to put more food into that once we've got a good stable amount of food we should be okay we are struggling for supplies though the food however is looking really good we've got a lot of vegetables and the next step for this area will be to have some more chicken farms so I know everybody is telling me that I need to keep these nice and small, but I really like, you know, we're, we're at a tavern there. So I think we should be okay. We're going to have someone work in the windmill, someone work in the communal oven, and that is now going to allow us to expand this a little bit more. Now, this marketplace has three free stall locations. We are short of fuel in there, though, so we do need to be very aware of that. And I think we have now cleared the space around my manor is nice and uh, our woodcutters lodge we can now limit that work area to this area that the foresters have replanted and the foresters here we're going to clear their work area all of our foresters actually we shouldn't be dealing with we shouldn't let them have work areas they should just be cleared so that we can continue to replenish the forest around this area all right i think that works very well we now have firewood and charcoal coming in uh, it, it's, it's a little bit desperate though uh, we have three unassigned oxen at the moment and then over here in Eichenhau people are looking a lot happier yeah okay now we have an iron deposit here as well this logging camp is already really making inroads on the timber supply so we're going to need to watch out for that Right then, I'm going to disband. I can't disband my retinue, but I am going to... Oh, I need to bring them both back into my region. And then, yeah, okay. We now have Imminruth. And I've got a little bit more influence, but my treasury. I'm going to need to increase the amount of money in there. Hopefully we'll get some bandits um, coming in. We're going to speed through December and hope that our fuel supply holds out. So down here what I wanted to do was create some burgage. Again. And this lot are all going to be specialised as brewers of some description. So we are going to end up taking them out of the workforce but we will upgrade them to level 2 and we'll get a brewery put in there. This stone deposit we're going to bring back into action with two families and we're going to have them clear that stone deposit and then I can put some more burgage in there, probably doing chicken coops. Up here, we want to put in our clay deposit and start getting the clay furnace up and running. So as I've got some stone, we're going to build a clay furnace right on the edge, somewhere near here. So it's right next to that stone mine. We could actually demolish the stone mine once it's uh, finished. We will not need it anymore. So we'll put our clay pit, uh, our... Actually, no, we want to put it up here. We put the clay deposit there. And then we'll also add in our clay mine. Over there. We just need to link this up with a road. Which will go along here. Curve gently. To there, and then curve back around to the actual centre of town. And then we can get someone working in the clay and hopefully get our church upgraded to the next tier. This family member, I have since found out we don't actually need them in there because we don't yet have a graveyard. But it might serve us well as we continue to expand to actually build a graveyard just in case. Some new mercenary companies have become available and a new family has moved in. We are now going to disband those two units. And hopefully, the Spear Militia, once we start bringing in some weaponry, will continue to expand. Over in Eichenau, let's see how we're doing here. We're looking pretty happy. Uh, our berry deposits are currently shrinking. We've got plenty of wild animals being hunted though. And our logging camp is closed for now. We've also got the woodcutters lodge here who are doing pretty well. We're only at 41% though. Homelessness has finished. Hunger is now done. We've got a decent market food variety. And these burgage plots should be ready to be upgraded very soon. They do need clothing and they do need water access. So our next step over here then is to put down some water. We'll get a well in. Uh, I would like to see the overview for my well. Thank you. Uh, where is it? Underground water. Let's have a look. I can't see it because of the frozen... <laughs> There we go. 
that's going to get us some well, uh, some water. And the next step here then is to make sure that they have a church and a clothing supply. So, go back into our industry. We want the tannery or the weaver's workshop. We'll get the tannery to produce leather. The tannery will go somewhere out here, actually, where the hunting lodge is. Cool. Right, uh, that's going to get set up, and we need to build a church now as well. For that, we do need to get our next level of production in industry, or where is it? Gathering ready, which will be the saw pit. We're going to stick the saw pit down here next to the logging camp, and once that saw pit is constructed, we'll start banking the resources that we need to upgrade and build a church. We have a stone deposit out here that we can make use of and a clay deposit. So let's move back over to Zvayao. You can see we aren't building any treasury at the moment, but over here, Zvayao is looking really nice now. We've managed to sort out that fuel supply, which means we've got a nice income of charcoal and uh, we've got plenty of food. And that will only in increase as we go further forward. We've got some bread being made in the communal oven, so people are really going to start being able to get some decent supplies here. The next step, though, is the tavern and the church. So, mining pit. This clay mining pit is up and running. We're going to bunch in a load of people there. It's a rich deposit, so we're going to get plenty of clay from that. And the clay furnace, we will add in. It does require Fu uh, refueling so we're going to give it two fuel reserves so it needs to have two pieces of fuel in there at all times and what we could even do is run a little bit of a, a like auxiliary road that goes from the clay pit out into the rest of the settlement so we'll have it run all the way along here this little path which will then link up with that area there and then we expand even further we could put another farm in there but I'm not sure what the land is like and at the moment, we're getting, uh, you know, our farmhouses are doing pretty well. We have a look. Uh, can I see what we got last time? We, we don't get a great deal of yield from these, which is a shame. The um, the actual, you know, the, the fertility here is not good. But there's very little we can do about that right now. And uh, yeah, we're looking pretty good. So, our next step is to continue our expansion. Now that we're starting to bring in some regional wealth, we're getting a nice bit of cash coming in. We've got plenty of like grain, flour, hides and leather, a lot of iron ore and now clay coming in. So we can actually look at what we need to improve our wooden church. We actually need 10 lots of these tiles which come from the clay furnace. Those clay, f clay tiles will be used to upgrade our wooden church. And then what we need to do is if we go to our level 2 burgage plots, small stone church and then we need a tavern with a steady supply of ale there's a little trick here what you can do is you can actually get your tavern one ale put in there and then for some reason just cease production and as long as that tavern with ale is coming in you'll be okay however i don't want to play it that way i would like to actually get some proper ale coming in and for that we need rye is it rye that we need look at this area for rye this field would be good and then fields up here actually that could be really good so if we go and have a look at our where is it brewing 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 the malt house they use barley to produce malt and the malt is what we then use to put into the and i think for that we actually need to improve these areas here they need some food and clothing. These lots still need food. Yeah, we're going to need to get some varieties of food for this lot so we can actually upgrade them. But if we have a look at our brewery extension, they produce ale from malt. And that will convert all of the inhabitants in those buildings to artisans. So what we should do is we should get a uh, malt farm. So what, what do they need for malt again? Uh, I've said that so many times. It's barley. So let's have a look at the fertility for barley. It is terrible. Terrible in this region. Terrible in the other regions. And uh, yeah, we're not looking great for barley at the moment. But there is a small patch here that is pretty fertile. So we are going to build a brand new farmhouse. Just here, I want to have a look again at our barley fertility 
there's pretty good and then we want to put a field in that goes out here then there then there no we want to have it run along here then to here and there we'll build that and then we're going to have this fallow we're going to crop rotation we're actually going to have it doing barley straight away we'll have it go back to fallow and then uh third year we'll do barley again and we'll just see what we can do to push that as high as possible and get as much barley produced as possible then we can have our malt house work on producing malt from what we get there uh we're pretty good on well we're not that good on timber actually i lied but our logging camp can now get back to work we'll have two people working in there to cut down some of the trees that the foresters have replenished there uh fuel's good food's good i think zvayao has kind of weathered its little storm that it was going through that stone deposit is now completely gone so we can actually demolish the stone cutters camp there and let the reforesting continue in that area there we've got a nice little pasture in this space here for a sheep farm we have yet to bring in any livestock but if we can start developing a nice steady supply of ale through our barley and malt we should be okay and i'm wondering now if we're here where this farmhouse is where we've got loads of citizens we could potentially make some adjustments let's get some people foraging for berries and then over here we can now get more people working in the foragers hut here we've not had anybody else move in which is slightly worrying but i think that might be more to do with the fact that we need more space at the moment we don't have enough timber apparently we do have enough timber hmm. requirements not met what are we missing oh Wait, it's expanding the living space, not improving the actual plot. So I only had one living space that I could actually expand there. We're going to need to build some more burgage here, which is fine. Absolutely fine. We're going to have a, a little bit of a weird burgage row here. That goes like that. <laughs> cool. Right, now that we've got some more burgage coming in, and uh, people should start feeling a lot better about living in this little region. We've got loads of firewood. Not so hot on the timber and the planks, but we do need to get that church built here as well. Uh, we've been on for quite a while, so I'm going to have... Oh, I can't have someone working in the saw pit there. What we'll do is we'll uh, leave it there, but we have made some really big inroads here. We've got some exposed goods there, so we could do with having someone working in our storehouse again to help move stuff around when I find where I've put the storehouse. I think it's down here. There it is large storehouse we'll have someone working in there they do have yeah there's plenty of stuff we can put in there people will start moving that damp supply indoors and uh yeah i'm pretty happy with how that's gone we've made some huge expansions as uh, vaya is looking really really strong at the moment if you can just have a little look here got some nice stuff going on the land is starting to recover a little bit from our initial builds got lots of vegetables growing and it's uh, overall looking a lot nicer here. And then if we head on over to our new area, our little settlement here in Eichenau, we're just starting to build and improve. The next step will be to look for some bandits, hope to improve our wealth and um, actually expand into Immenruth. And then we need to make a claim for Waldbrand. But for now, I think my policies are going to have to change a little bit we're going to have to uh, add some more taxes i think because we do need to in increase our treasury so over here if we have taxes we want to get some land tax but our land tax only improves our regional wealth our tithe is what gives us influence and that's the percentage of our surplus food that is given to the church in return for said influence we're going to bump that up to 10 percent so any of our surplus food now will be donated to the church, which will then be converted into influence. And given that we have so many new vegetable plots just cropping up here, I think that's a really good way to go. So as we approach the kind of middle of year five, I think we'll leave it there. And I, uh, I hope again you have enjoyed today's episode of Manor Lords, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.